Well, top of the morning to you. Welcome back for another little run through of uh, calculator uh, revision questions. This time, of course, we're going to be getting stuck into theme two uh, to really make sure you can uh, pick up some uh, nice straightforward marks on those calculate questions. But they're only straightforward if you know what to do. And that's what this video is really about. Let's go for it. Right. Uh, so these are the uh, sort of key terms or key calculations you need to be aware of. All right. Uh, so you can pause that and have a little look through um, on the next one. Next slide here. You can then test yourself. How well do you understand each of those terms or those calculations? Uh, what do you know there? All right, great stuff. There they are again. And let's go through the questions then. Okay, so first one. Uh, now we've got information about business. Of course, you can pause this and have a go at it before you listen to me go through it. So using the information in table one, calculate gross profit. So we've got gross profit margin. Uh, so we've got to take this 90,000 and divide it by the 300,000, which is the total sales revenue. So 90 divided by 300, well, ultimately, that's uh, when you multiply 3 by 100, that gives you a 30% gross margin. Uh, so that means basically that they are retaining uh, 30p in every pound of income that they actually earn. Uh, we've got a question lower down there, explain one impact of excessive, excessive communication within a business. Uh, okay, so that could lead to uh, poor coordination, it may lead to lower morale, it could lead to lower motivation, lower productivity. Uh, so there's a variety of points that you could identify there and then say, well, lower productivity, this would lead to uh, less output per worker, therefore, uh, less goods would be made to be sold. Something along those lines, absolutely fine, all right? Uh, now, we've got a little question here about internal source of finance. Which of these is an internal source of finance? Ken, pause this if you want to have a uh, run through on your own. Um, well, of course, it's got to be selling assets, hasn't it? Okay, um, next one. Uh, selling price of the products, £500. We've got the sales volumes through business during the first three months. Uh, using the information in, calcul uh, in figure one, calculate the sales revenue of the business for the first three months. Okay, so it's simple um, revenue calculation, but you've just got to add that up for uh, the three months that you've actually got there, all right? So we can see, given the actual price of 500, in January it's 500 times, uh, what, 3,000? Uh, and uh, then the following month, we can see that we've then got to work through uh, 500 times 5,000 uh, and add that on to what we had for January. Uh, and for our final one in March, you can see you've got 500 um, times by 4,000, all right? So, you know, this firm is uh, making a good bit of money here. So a lot of income coming in, okay? So that's uh, good stuff for them. Uh, so if you've then multiplied those, just add them all up together and uh, you get the right answer, all right? So uh, it's simply price times quantity. There's your price, here are your quantities, okay? Lovely stuff. All right, next one. Uh, figure three shows a Bargate stock graph which details the delivery of ash wood to Fender's factory for 60 days in 2016. During this time, it received three deliveries of ash wood from its suppliers. These are marked on figure three as A, B, C. All right, lovely. Um, now, just understand the way in which these work. We've got a maximum stock holding identified here. We've got a reorder level. So when stock hits this level, a email goes straight through to their suppliers, which then triggers uh, a new order to go through. And the difference between ordering and receiving the products, this difference here is the lead time, okay? So that is the difference between ordering and receiving, receiving the product. All right, so identify the amount of Ashwood Fender held as buffer stock. Well, this is our buffer stock down here. We can see we've got a 1,000. So this looks as though we've got, what, five little, uh, blocks here. So two, four, six, eight, ten. Yeah, lovely. Okay, so this is obviously going to be 200 kilograms of uh, stock there, all right? So that's, uh, that's fairly straightforward. Identify the day when delivery B uh, of ash wood arrived at Fender's factory. 
identify the day okay right so here's b right here so we can see we've got 20 to 40 uh, so this looks like fours now okay so 24 28 32 36 40 yeah so it's certainly in fours and it's going to be what day number 32 there all right uh calculate the amount of ash wood that was delivered to fender in order uh b your advice show you uh show your workings well we can see they weren't quite at their buffer stock level so they hadn't actually ran it all down to this lower point so they were at 400 okay so they were at 400 they've then got uh, and remember these going up 200, 2,200, 2,400, 2,600. It's 2,600 up here. Minus this 400 tells you the size of the order, of course. Um, lovely. Now, other questions that they could ask you in relation to this could be about how many days does it take for this order uh, to actually come through and that is order C so the email gets sent here how long does it take to for order C to actually come through and you can see remember that this is four days all right so each of these blocks is four days 44 48 52 so we're looking at 12 days there all right okay guys I hope that's uh, been nice and useful there and um, you know it's it's just important to uh, really understand these little uh, diagrams anyway let's move it along uh, table one contains information about a new piece of machinery that a business will keep for five years okay so using the information in table one calculate the average rate of return okay so calculate the average rate of return of the new machine you're advised to show your workings uh, okay so this here is 500,000 over five years so that gives you a hundred thousand pounds per year okay a hundred thousand pounds profit over those five years all you've then got to do is take that hundred thousand divide it by the fifty thousand and you can see that that's going to give you a return of what about two hundred percent or so so you know that's looking pretty good uh, next question explain one impact or uh, let's just pull that up on a business of producing high quality products so if a business is uh, focusing on high quality products of course then they are going to uh, generate a really good uh, reputation that's going to uh, increase brand loyalty okay and that's going to increase sales all right so that's all good news lovely uh, which one of the following is an immediate benefit of just-in-time stock okay so what do we got here right um, low warehousing costs it's got to be that one of course okay let's come down here using the information in figure one calculate the revenue for business X you're advised to show your workings okay so here's business X uh, so we're just trying to work out the actual revenue here and we can see it's 40% uh, of 150 million okay so if we just simply go 150 times 0.4 then that's going to tell us that the actual revenue uh, that they earn here is going to be 60 million so all I did there really simple 150 million times uh, 0.4 okay and it's 0.4 because it's 40 percent of that total of course all right so really straightforward two marks there uh, okay so how about this just understanding some of these uh, uh, little profit and loss accounts I don't know how they're going to present this information you know with the this first exam let's uh, see what we've got here um, can you complete this table it should be nice and straightforward all right just remember gross profit equals um, revenue minus cost of sales net profit equals gross profit minus expenses uh, so therefore what do we get well there it is all right so uh, there's the key information there okay um, so let's move it on to um, these ones here this is looking at Netflix financial performance between 2014 and 2016 um, we've got revenue we've got cost of sales and we've got net profit this is almost encouraging you th to think that this dark one is gross profit but it's not all right so now this question is saying calculate Netflix's gross profit in 2015 okay so to actually work that out we can see that we've got to uh, take this figure 
six million uh, six point seven seven nine million okay and 511 uh, and we've got to subtract our uh, four million five hundred and ninety one thousand four hundred and seventy six dollars okay that will give us the answer so it's really straightforward this one minus this one okay and that's going to give you the gross profit okay so let's now move it on to uh, calculate net profit margin uh, so we've got net profit margin uh, in 2014 so net profit you can see is 402,648 if we just put that over uh, 5,504,656 uh, and multiply by 100 we'll get the answer okay so all you're doing is taking that net profit figure and dividing that by this and multiplying by 100 ultimately it tells you uh, how much of the percent is actually held for every dollar uh, of income that this firm receives, okay? Um, all right, and the higher the percentage, the, the, more, um, the more of their overall revenue they retain as net profit, okay? Um, now, you can also have a go at uh, just calculating gross profit for each year as a bit of practice there, okay? So I've just put all these figures here uh, together and you may just want to pause this video here and have a run through calculations of the gross profit margin and the net profit margin and then I'll show you the answers uh, in the next slide so you can pause this and give that a crack now. Okay, so uh, here's the answers. Now, just remember the way in which we're going about doing this. I'll just come back to this one. Uh, net profit, 402,648 over uh, the revenue figure div multiplied by 100, okay? Now we've got net profit here divided by the revenue times 100. Net profit again divided by the revenue times 100. Okay, that will give us each of our net profits. The gross profit, we've got to take this figure and divide it by here. This figure divided by here. This figure divided by here and multiply by 100 for each. Okay, and then we end up with these uh, ratios. So, what does this tell us? Because they could possibly ask you a question to actually analyze the ratios and what they mean. Um, ultimately, we can see that. This one has remained, by and large, fairly constant. So it tells us that their cost of sales, their cost of sales, because remember the difference between revenue and gross profit is cost of sales. Their cost of sales has remained uh, pretty much uh, in line as the business has actually grown. It's grown in size uh, between 2014 and 2015, but there has been growth between like 2014, 2016 overall. It's just come down from this high. Uh, but nevertheless, the actual um, cost of sales uh, have remained fairly constant. However, we can see that the expenses have been growing. The expenses have been growing and that is represented by the net profit margin falling. So they are, uh, for every dollar of uh, income, they were making 7.31 cents Netflix. Uh, now they're only making 3.55 cents, okay? So for every dollar of income, uh, they're actually retaining less as net profit. So that's why that's really useful there, okay? It's not like we'd suggest here that they need to find uh, new suppliers because their gross profit margin is falling nastily. It's just they've got higher expenses and uh, part of that may be marketing and that they want to uh, continue expanding and so on. Okay, let's keep going. Um, so table one continue, contains information about a business. Um, calculate the cost of sales of the business. Right, so we've got sales revenue, we've got uh, gross profit. Uh, what an absolute gimme this is. If you know to rearrange this, okay, then you're gonna identify the missing amount is 900,000, of course it is. All right, uh, so explain one reason why a business may provide employees with fringe benefits. Okay, so. This may develop staff loyalty to the firm. That might be a good um, good argument to put in place. Okay, it could uh, promote better health and well-being of the staff because they've got a gym membership. Okay, that may result in less absenteeism. Okay, so less days off. Uh, therefore, the business uh, output and productivity would be higher. Something along those lines, ideal. All right, next one. Using the information in Figure One, calculate the average sales revenue for. 
uh, business A for the months between May and August. Your advice show your workings. Okay, so calculate the average sales revenue for business A for the four months. So we've got four months here, okay, May to August. All we've got to do is add each of these up. Okay, so we've got 250 plus 450 plus 400,000 plus 800,000 and divide it by four. Okay, really straightforward. Okay, let's move it on. Um, average quantity of meals sold per day at Nando's restaurant in Exeter, okay. So uh, we've got these figures on the actual uh, different categories there, starters, main courses, and the desserts, all right. So calculate the quantity of desserts sold as a percentage of all meals uh, at Nando's restaurant in Exeter. Okay, so to work this out, we've got to first make sure we correctly identify the desserts, okay? We can see that that is in this category here, it's 232. Okay, but we've got to work that out as an overall total. So that means you've got to add up uh, 232. I'll just do this quickly here. So you've got to add up 232 plus uh, 62 plus 286. Uh, add those together and that gives you 580, of course, all right? So now to work this out, you've then got to go 232 divided by 580. Uh, and it tells you basically it's 40% when you multiply by 100 there, okay? So it's 0.4 multiplied by 100 is 40%, all right? Uh, using the information, calculate the average, average daily sales revenue generated from main courses at Nando's. So here, all you've got to do is identify the main courses, 286, and multiply it by the average price, 1420. It's 286 multiplied by that, easy revenue calculation. Okay, define the term public limited company. So this is a company that sells its shares publicly on the stock market. Okay, nice and straightforward there. Uh, at its launch, GoPro Calm, it was priced at 6999. Right, this price was reduced to 64999. Uh, calculates two decimal places, the percentage reduction. So here we've just got to do change divided by original. So we're, we're, we're basing this on a 50 pound difference. Okay, so it's come down by 50 pounds. The original price was 699.99. Okay, so change divided by original times through by 100. Okay, and what do we get? Well, we get 7.14%. Okay, uh, all right, so uh, there we go. So 7.14%, uh, perfect. All right, lovely job. Uh, next up, using figure four, identify the year where GoPro achieved its lowest net profit margin. Okay, so where was its lowest net profit margin? Um, now we've got the sales revenue and we've got the net profit. Okay, so uh, what's this therefore going to tell us? Well, we can see that this sales revenue was enormous in 2015. Okay, but the actual net profit was very, very low. So you can easily identify there, 36 divided by 1,620. You can practice those other net profit margins there, but that one's going to be the smallest, all right? Uh, how about uh, some more average rate return? Because we're, we're not 100% sure how this is going to be presented in the exam, okay? There's a good chance of it being in there. Uh, so why don't you have a little go here at uh, just working the average rate of return out for this particular example. Right, okay, so what you've got to do here, you've got to total up the uh, entirety of uh, the profit made for the five years, that's 700,000, okay, divide that by the number of years, that's five, equals 140,000, okay, so then average annual profit divided by the cost of uh, investment, okay, um, times 100 means that you're doing 140,000 divided by 400,000 times 100 equals 35%. Lovely job. Okay, how about this one? Go on, practice that again. Okay, go back to the last slide if that was helpful. There it is. All right, those are the steps to do. So calculate the total, divide it by the number of years, and then divide that average figure by the cost of the investment. Easy stuff, really. You can all do this. I know you can. All right, it's just a matter of actually working through it. Great stuff. Okay, so uh, there's the answer there. All right, I hope that's all right, guys. 
Uh, great stuff. I, I really do wish you the best of luck uh, with your exams, but don't forget, you know, in life you do create your own luck, okay? And just by the fact of uh, you actually doing the hard graft here and going through this video and really thinking about it, you know, that counts for a lot. So good on you. All the best.